All right, everyone, welcome back to A Plus Parents. And with me today, it's a super special guest. Her name is Sarah Jordan. And Sarah has a, she's a blogger and her blog is called Heart and Soul Homeschooling. We're gonna talk a lot about that. But one of the things that Sarah brings to our podcast today is a really specialized uh, you know, profession that she comes from the background as working in, she has a degree in social work. And it's really great because so oftentimes, you know, homeschoolers, we talk about socialization and how do we, you know, how do we implement that and get kids together and get kids doing things. So we've got an expert in the field, which is here today with us. So, you know, her background is in social work and she specialized in early childhood development, which of course led to her interest in individualizing educational options, which turns into what? Well, it looks a lot like the way homeschooling looks, that it really becomes that individualized educational opportunity. So she believes that life learning really is a lifelong adventure. It's not just like a checklist to go through. And Sarah is actually, she's a well-known author. She's a speaker. She's a consultant for homeschoolers. And she's got her blog, heartandsoulhomeschooling.com, which we'll be able to link up for everybody uh, as you'll be able to get and see all the different ways to contact with Sarah. But Sarah also has uh, a a a real gift for encouraging and inspiring families to find their own unique educational path because it's based on the children's strengths and talents, which I just, I love that. She creates resources and I can't wait to hear more about this because she calls it delight directed learning. So if you've heard of self-directed learning and other kinds of learning, this is called delight directed learning, which I am so excited to find out more about what that means and how it works and what parents can do to apply that in their own homeschooling journeys. So she also works on things that create unit studies and journals. So Sarah, welcome. We're so happy to have you here. Uh, I just, I'm just excited to be here. And especially we're going to find out more about what delight directed learning is as we go. So Sarah, tell me, um, you know, like if you were going to say a little bit about who you are and what you do, how would you describe yourself today in today's world? Well, uh, first, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. I think this is a great opportunity to to reach homeschool parents, and I love your mission for this. So it's a real joy to be here. Um, I am a homeschool mom of three, and that's really my identity right now. Uh, I've been married for 26 years to my high school sweetheart. And what I do is try to encourage that joy of lifelong learning, that education is not something that just happens Monday through Friday between eight and three, that it's really a lifelong process. And finding the delight in that really relates to what makes you tick, what motivates you. And you discover this about your children and you help encourage them in that because that's where you really find the joy of discovery and the excitement of learning and encouraging their natural creativity and curiosity. Wow, that, that's awesome. All right. So is that how you started out in your own <laughs> background? Like, does that like, you know, going and and having a path of, you know, social work and working with early childhood development uh, what was your own education background like? Were, were you a homeschooler? Did you do public school? How did, how did that work for you? <laughs> I went to public school and actually my, my own experience in public school is what made me look at different alternatives to public school. Um, it was, I was about 12 years old when I first heard of homeschooling. It was during those awkward middle school years and I really wasn't happy at school. I had taken the PSAT in seventh grade and passed at a second year college level. And I thought, why do I have to keep going to school now? That seems like the right question a 12 year old would have, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yes, exactly, exactly. (laughs) Not thinking about emotional maturity or anything like that. Just like, well, why do I have to keep going then? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and wanting to, you know, ask questions and learn about things I was interested in. And at that point thinking, I want to move on to bigger and better things. <laughs> but, and, you know, the environment with bullying and that kind of thing, it just, to me, it, school felt sort of like a punishment. I wanted to read books and I wanted to learn. And it seemed like public school 
didn't really want to encourage you to ask questions and make discoveries. So, but up until that point, I had thought maybe I'll be a teacher when I grow up. Mm. So hearing about homeschooling, I sort of filed that away in my mind and thought, you know, one day I'd like to homeschool my kids and give them something different than my experience. So that's really what triggered that. Mm, that's awesome. That's awesome. And here you are doing it. So you followed yeah. through. That's so great. Okay. So tell me, uh, because, because you have a pretty unique educational background and your experience at, you know, you're able to bring that in and really, you know, you know, provide something for young people. And not, not all parents are going to be able to have that kind of a background. And my background's not in that, right? So, you know, I was, you know, I, I didn't, my own background came from public school and I was a public school teacher, you know, and I really found along the way that uh, I had, I had a gift to write curriculum, but I couldn't do it in the public school setting. So I had to find another way and I discovered homeschooling. Next thing I know, it's like, oh my gosh, not only did I discover this, my kids are, you know, we became a homeschool family out of my own discovery, which was awesome. So yeah. you have something called a home, a purposeful homeschooling vision. So, and I think for, you know, for oftentimes for people, it's like, they, they're trying to figure out, well, how do I get started and what do I do? And where, you know, just looking at the things that we do, or we've been at this for a long time. Sometimes the fuel tank needs uh, refueled, right? And we need to, we yeah. need to fill it up again. So what would, how do you define, or what is a purposeful homeschooling vision? Well, I think that I like to call it your compass that you use for homeschooling. You figure out your why. You look at the big picture. Why are we homeschooling? Is it to have opportunities to, you know, like Simone Biles and be a gymnast and have time to do that kind of thing? Or is it to get into a certain college? Or is it just a more holistic approach? Like this is developing character and connection and curiosity and creativity. Like I said, those four C's of homeschooling and your purposeful homeschooling vision is that what is your overall goal, the big picture. And if you can start with that, if you know your why, I think everything else can come from that branch out of that. Don't start with choosing curriculum. Don't start you know, with, gee, what's our schedule going to be? Are we four days a week, five days a week? But why are we doing this? And that's mm. your purposeful homeschooling vision, your mission statement for your homeschool. Yeah, oh, I love that. You know, because if you know why you're doing something, then you can start to schedule everything that needs scheduled around your why, as opposed to then try to fit your why into what you made your schedule out of. So that's brilliant. Yeah. I like that. All right. So how do parents go about that? Like, how do they create their own? How do they create that? Why? How do they create that purposeful homeschooling vision? Well, uh, there are several ways that I think I call it reverse engineering, where you you think to yourself, what does success look like, either for this year, for this month, for the entire journey, and think, what is it that we're trying to accomplish and reverse engineer? from that point on. And then you find the resources that you need to make that happen. And mm. it just seems that sometimes we put the cart before the horse. And I think with my own public school experience, that's what was missing, the meaning, the purpose. Yeah. Why are we learning this? How is this gonna apply to life? And that purposeful homeschooling vision can take care of those questions. And then you can concentrate on what really matters and what lights your children up and what they get excited about. Oh, that's awesome. You know, I think as a homeschool family, uh, there's, you know, for us to know that we know the why, but for our kids to know the why. You know, for them, oftentimes, because the question comes back, well, why am I learning this? What am I going to use this? And what do I, you know, so I get that a lot in math, as you can imagine, right? So, <laughs> but, you know, but oftentimes it's like, I think that if, uh, if, if our young people, they know why we're doing something, right? If you know why you're doing it and you have that purpose behind you, then oftentimes, then it's like, oh, there's work to do. Okay, well, let me do the work. Why am I doing the work? Because it's going to help me fulfill my mission. So I love that. That's really good. Okay, so we talked about, Delight, 
self-directed learning. So first of all, what do you, how do you define delight? I love the words, right? Delight, delighted <laughs> learning. What is that? Well, that I think it's at the root of purposeful homeschooling. It's that, like I said, what makes your kids tick? What, what are their strengths? What are their gifts? What are their interests? And that's what they take delight in. And of course, when you take delight in something, it's not a chore to learn it. It's not a chore to apply it to your life. It's something that is purpose-driven. So, and that's where the delight directed came from. Some people call it interest-led or child-led, but to me, it's even a little more beyond that because, you know, like every kid is going to have an interest in something. Maybe it's horses. So you do a unit study on horses, but how do you make those connections across the curriculum and apply it to their life? How is this going to help them and how does it all fit together? So well, that's actually a great question. So what are some ways that you would include the right directed learning in your homeschool? Like as you know, in the family, like well, how, do you, how do you do that? How do you include that in that? Well, I think that goes back to the uh, making connections with curiosity and creativity, where a lot of the things that we do are field trips to actually get out and, and see things and meet new people. And that way you're exposed to new ideas. And when you're exposed to new ideas, your interests also expand because your questions then also expand. And that's where the interests come from. It can start with something as simple as asking a question. And when your child asks a question and you take that seriously and you say, well, maybe I don't know the answer, but we can find this out together. They realize that this has value and this applies to life. So things like that, like field trips, creative projects, giving them the time and the space to just be creative in whatever way they are. It, like my daughters are interested in digital art and uh, making sculptures and just whatever, you know, lights them up and give them the space to do that. Because I think that's important to have that kind of freedom and self-direction. And, and then I design unit studies based on their interests also and how they can apply that. Like my oldest daughter's interested in computer coding and that's not something I ever would have pursued myself and I didn't know anything about it, but I can provide the resources and the tools for her. And she has just taken off with it. And now she's, she's actually graduated our homeschool last year. So that's Aww. exciting to have a homeschool Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. And I'm so proud of her for, you know, taking this on herself and continuing her studies in web design and development. And, you know, I watch her now and she has like this whole computer screen filled with code and it's just all Greek to me, but she is so amazing the way that she can just do that. And that's not something that I would have planned into our curriculum because I wouldn't have thought of it, but because she asked questions and had an interest, it was something that we could we could do and it's just amazing to watch how it's turned out 